the word meant, and it means highly valued, and that was Zach Baxley with it. Highly valued, okay? Highly valued of the Lord, highly valued of his wife, highly valued of his daughter. But do you know he was highly valued of the lost as well? Because the lost would come up and chat with Zach, okay? He would come up and spend time with Zach. He was highly valued, all right? Precious in the sight, okay? Zach had some sight issues, if I remember correctly, right? I did. And um, he, could, he would never, he, I would keep losing my backpack on the street. I said, Zach, keep your eye on. He said, I am, my glass one. And uh, he would never, my backpack would be stolen and stuff. Sight of who? The Lord. The Lord's always looking at us, okay? Always checking us out. But precious in the sight of the Lord is the what? Death. Death of one of his what? Saints. Saints. Okay? So death. Remember, death in the Bible uh, this is what's wrong in our world today. Death means over with in our world. Michael Jackson, dead, gone. Elizabeth Taylor, dead, gone. That's not what the Bible means, death. Death, all it means is opening up the door to the other side. Mm -hmm. It's all death is in the Bible. Matter of fact, in the King James Bible, it uses the word asleep many times for death. I think it's a great word for death, because if you're asleep, you eventually what? Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. And you wake up, you wake up in the sight of who? The Lord. So, right? so here's Zach who had a few eye issues, right? But now Zach's seeing time precious in the sight of the Lord is Zach. Yeah. But now precious in the sight of Zach is who? The Lord. He can finally see him face to face. Okay, we got to get out of this body to get where we want to go to be face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ and do that, okay? Um, I always, uh, John and I were just talking that... Um, and Chris said uh, one of the things we loved about Zach was just his encouragement. He was such an encourager. And how many times I had a phone message left on my cell phone? Mark, Wednesday night, Phillips Arena, okay? You're going to be there, okay? Yeah. So it's okay, there, okay? And, uh, and sometimes I wouldn't be there. I'd travel out and speak and preach and stuff and just get tired. And uh, he just leaves Mark, Saturday, 7 p.m., okay? Got a bunch of motorcycle stuff going down there, okay, Georgia? No. Okay, going to be there, okay? And all of these messages, and so when he's sitting on the street, I haven't seen you about Mark, he was always just gently pushing me. Stay out there, Mark. Keep out there, Mark. Doesn't matter if you travel and preach with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need me on the streets, Mark. Where you belong, Mark. Just out there telling people about Jesus Christ. Always was a big encourager uh, for me to do that. I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, uh, I, I, I always like to play with people's names. I was a school teacher, I always play with my student names. With Zach, uh, I always played, um, you, know, you know, I always add extra letters to people's names. But I would call him Zachary or Zacharias all the time. But one time he was walking up towards me at Phillips Arena. Uh, we were standing there handing tracks out. He was walking up to me and he was coming up to me. And I said, Stick Man. And, you know, because he had that stick. And I was like, called Stick Man, okay? And so he laughed. So one night we're out there. And the policeman standing next to us, uh, Micah, that Zach has witnessed to and I have witnessed to, and here comes Zach. I said, Stick Man, where have you been? All of a sudden, Micah started laughing, okay? I started laughing, Zach started laughing. Stick Man stuck with Zach for the last maybe year of his life. He said, Stick Man, you have that stick. My mom always told me to be nice to be with sticks. I like that. Yeah. The turf trouble's gonna come, okay? And, but now, the next time in Phillips Arena, I get to look at the police officer, Micah, to tell the sick man's passed away. Mm. Okay? And I'm going to say to Micah, Micah, what is holding you back from being born again to say? Because you will never see Zach again. You will never see the Lord Jesus Christ if you don't get born again to say, Micah. Okay? He gives us some right answer. We're kind of playing the game. It's no game if you don't the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? That's right. right. Okay? And then, uh, last thing for you, um, I wrote a book called Paradise. Anybody read this book? Did you read it? Okay. In the book, is who? I, I wrote it here. In, it's in Hawaii. I guess I put Zach in Hawaii for some reason. And there's a street preacher. There's a street preacher, and he's got these signs that says, where will you spend eternity? Who's that? Zach. That's it. Ask me why you deserve hell. That's a great song. Okay. Then he's got a cross and says, There is room at the cross for you. Who is that? That's Zach. Zach always has that. So I actually put him in my book. Uh, because I just like that. Uh, they're witnessing to a lost guy here in the, in the Hawaii. And there's four guys. We are Zach, John, David, and Chris. So I put all my Atlanta buddies in there. I want to bless you guys. And thank you for being on the street so much. 
And so they're talking to Josh, and then all of a sudden it says Zach, who was doing the speaking for the group at this time. Doesn't that sound like Zach who was speaking for the group? Yeah. He just took over. Yeah. And then it's all Josh, time. this boss guy, just like he always does, and telling Josh he needs to repent of his sins and get saved. And little did Josh know that Josh was going to be dead just within about 30 minutes from this book. Mm. So here one moment and gone, and here was Zach witnessing this guy. But then right at the end, uh, jo uh, Josh says to Zach, I have a Bible in my hotel room. I should probably pick it up tonight and take a gander at it. Yeah. And Zach said to him, read and heed. Have heard that from Zach? Yeah. Read and heed, okay? And don't forget, if Jesus isn't the master, you are headed for what? Disaster. Disaster. And the reason I put Zach in the book is because I tell people around the country, I preach around the United States, I go to Puerto Rico tomorrow to preach, and uh, I tell people all the time, Zach Baxter is the boldest man of God in the land of Georgia. Amen. Okay. And I've been praying the last few days, I've been praying for God to raise up some warriors to replace Zach on the streets. But I think it's going to take literally, I'm not lying because I don't say this to uh, blow Zach's head up, 10 to 15 men to fill his shoes. Wow. He will be out there day in and day out, sometimes twice a day. Yeah. So yeah. twice one time, okay, in one day. I said, heck, do you ever get tired? And he just loved Jesus so much. He loved the cross so much. He loved the walk so much that he made sure he was out there giving the truth all the time. We need people to replace. If we're doing this correctly, we're handing the baton to the group behind us, right? We got the young ones here and stuff handing the baton here. Okay, men in here, who's going to take Zach's place on the street? But I did. We need it. John's been out there. Unbelievable. John's been out there. Okay. Uh, John doesn't have a house, but John's got a house in heaven, okay, for all the people who what he's done for Lord Jesus Christ. But we need another, and another, and another. And the best way to honor Zach, go talk to a lost person about Jesus Christ. Amen. Best way to honor Zach, go talk to a lost person about Jesus Christ. That's how you honor Zach, okay? Um, people always like to throw down the RIP, rest in peace, no... Zach Baxter rest in the Prince of what? Peace. He's going to be resting in his arms forever and ever and ever. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for just uh, Zach. Is